Right, folks, we want to read this evening from, we're back up into the Old Testament, we're in 2 Kings, 2 Kings chapter 4, and we're very simply going to read the first seven verses together, 2 Kings chapter 4, I'm going to begin to read in verse 1, <coughs> excuse me. Second Kings then, it's chapter 4, verse 1. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons, to be bond men. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, Thine handmaid hath not anything in the house, save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, Borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shalt pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of God. And he said, Go, sell the oil, pay thy debt, and live thou and thy children of the rest. Amen. Just a simple little story, and we just trust and pray, <coughs> excuse me, that the Lord's blessing will rest upon his word this evening for his own name's sake. Friends, you know you don't need me to tell you this evening that we live in, a, in an uncertain world. We live in a world where great change happens not only globally, not only internationally, but great change can happen individually in our own lives. The Bible speaks so well how we don't know what another day is going to bring forth. And you don't need me to tell you tonight that everything can be fine in your life one moment and the next moment, the next day, the next week, whenever, everything can just turn completely upon its head. And in many ways, that's how we pick up this story this evening. We have this lady. She has just lost her husband. He is a son of the prophets, the Bible tells us here. She tells us here in this verse that he's one who feared the Lord. But he has been taken from her. Circumstances has hit this home. Circumstances have hit this family that's way beyond anything that they could control. And quite often life can be quite like that. We go through seasons of affliction. And those seasons come to every single one of us. As I've said, from one moment to the next, we never can be completely sure. But let me say this this evening, that it's on cloudy days, it's in cloudy times like that, that we can see the rainbow of the love and the blessing of Almighty God. Remember Noah? Remember how he, he built that ark to the saving of his family, the Bible says? And they went through the days of the flood, they went through those days of of deluge, of disaster upon the earth. And whenever they come out at the other side, the bow was placed in the sky to remind them of God's covenant where he said he would never uh, flood the whole earth like that again. And sometimes it's whenever we go through the difficulties and the pain of life and the situations that are completely beyond our control that we can see the bow of the covenant that God has made with his people. And so often, those of us who know the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord tonight, so often praise God. It's in those situations 
that God can bring a remedy, that God can bring change, that God can even turn that upside down situation upon its head, put it the right way up again. And many of us can testify tonight to times whenever the Lord's blessing has been upon us in that way. But we pick up this story this evening, and that's, that's where this lady finds herself. Her husband has been taken from her. There is debt that is still outstanding, and so the debtor comes to her door. And in that kind of, of custom, the way it was in those days, if you couldn't meet the debt, then the children would be taken as slaves to work the debt off. That's basically uh, what this is about. That's what is happening here. Okay, and so she brings her, her situation. We look at the story and we find she comes to Elisha. Elisha's the man of God. Elisha's the voice of God in the nation. Elisha's the leader, basically, of the prophets. And she comes to Elisha and she brings her, her tale. She brings her, her situation before him. Let me say something just before we pass away from that. She tells him the whole situation. She comes to Elisha. She doesn't try to, to hide the situation. The debt is there. The, the debt collector, if you want to call him that, he has come to see the debt fulfilled and her children stand in, in great difficulty. You know, the Bible speaks to us in Romans chapter 7, verse 11, about how we are sold under sin. All our versions of the Bible speak about us being slaves to sin. And friends, how true that is tonight. Can I ask you tonight, as you think about your life, as you think about a law that God has placed upon this earth, and as you think about his commandments and think about his laws, and how in your life and how in your experience you have perhaps broken those laws, broken those commandments, maybe one, maybe two, Maybe three, maybe four, maybe five, six, whatever. Maybe you haven't just broken them once, but maybe there has been commandments of his, the law of God, that you have continually broken over and over and over again in your life. The Bible tells us that that law has got to be remedied. We think about the law of the land tonight. Whenever we break the law, we pay the penalty. If you're a driver, you'll get penalty points and you'll get a fine. If you break the law in some other way, you'll maybe have to do the time, whatever it is. But the law exacts its judgment. The law exacts justice. The law has been broken and a price has got to be paid. You know, that's the lovely thing about that last chorus that we just sang. You know what? That the bridge of that chorus says, Oh, my debt is paid. It is paid in full. And here we find a lady in this story with a debt. And as far as she's concerned, the debt is owed. And the only way that that debt can be paid is if her two sons are sold into slavery. And just like you and me breaking the law of God, the price has got to be paid. And yet you and I have got absolutely no way to pay it. And Paul, over in Romans chapter 7, verse 11, as I've already said, Paul talks about us being sold under sin. We are slaves to sin. There's a debt that is owed. Little chorus says, I owed a debt I could not pay. He paid a debt he did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. Then the chorus changes. But now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace, the whole day long. Christ Jesus paid the debt that I could never pay. We owe tonight. We have broken the law of God. We have broken his commandments. There's a debt that has got to be exacted that you and I can not pay. But I want you to see something more here. That's how she finds herself. But thank God as we look at this story, we see what we could only call grace that is offered to her. If you look at verse 2, if you still have your Bible open or if the 
The brother there can put it up. In verse 2, Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? What shall I do for thee? Elisha, as it were, he, he opens, he's God's representative in the nation, and he opens the door of heavenly privilege that she might ask for whatever she wanted, that she might ask what she will. And it was an offer of great sufficient, that was greatly sufficient for all of her need. What shall I do for thee? Grace extended in the situation. And we were told in the story that she was so poor that she had nothing in her home except a pot of oil. A pot of oil. You know, friends, poverty, spiritual poverty, is a great place to be found. Spiritual poverty is a place where we have nothing to offer. It's a place where we have nothing that will meet the demand. It's a place where we are completely destitute. We are completely at a loss as to what's going to happen or what we were going to do. But let me say tonight, that kind of poverty is no obstacle to the presence of almighty grace and the fullness that God can bring into that situation. Praise God for that. Praise God. And so grace is offered to her. Let's just run on through the story for a moment or two. Not only is grace offered, but she has got to prepare for what's about to happen. And so the prophet says to her, go and borrow vessels. Notice he says, empty vessels. Verse 3, and he says, not a few. Let me explain something to you. She's in a situation. She's in a situation that she cannot solve. But as yet in her situation, in her situation, she has got no room for the great blessing that God wants to bestow upon her. And so the prophet Elisha says to her, go and borrow vessels. Go and borrow empty vessels. You know, the hymn writer says, have you any room for Jesus? He who bore your load of sin, as he knocks and asks admission, sinner, will you let him in? Room for pleasure. Room for business, but for Christ the crucified. Not a place that he can enter into your heart for which he died. Can I ask you, dear one, tonight, if you're sitting in this service and you don't know him as your Lord and you don't know him as your Savior, can I ask you tonight, have you room in your heart for him? Or is your heart so filled with everything that's of self or is your heart so filled with everything that we find in the Word? Or is your heart so filled with so many other things that there is no room for the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart for which he died? You see, here she is. She is nothing. She has a pot of oil, but she does not have the capacity. She does not have the emptiness. She does not have the room to be able to accept the blessing in grace that God longs to bestow upon her life and upon her experience. And so Elisha says to her, go and borrow vessels. Go to your neighbors and borrow vessels. You know, I look at that and I think to myself, neighbors can be great because you have neighbors who help and you have neighbors who do anything but help. Do you live beside anybody like that? Because sometimes that can be the case. But here's the thing. Neighbors who help can give in this situation the vessel that's empty to help her through her experience. But quite often spiritually in life, the neighbors who don't help bring something into your life and into my life so that whenever we work our way through that and come out the other side as the way God would want us to do, that experience can be a blessing and that experience, even that, can be fruitful in our own lives. And fruitful in their own experience. They don't give us exactly what they need. In fact, maybe sometimes, you know, they, 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 they sort of, to coin a phrase, they rub us up the wrong way. But even in the midst of all of that, God can put something in the human heart and in the life that can be a blessing 
in the fruitful days that lie ahead. What wilt thou that I should do to thee? What wilt thou that I should do for you? Grace. Okay, get vessels. Prepare for the blessing of God. Because God is about to meet your need. There is grace sufficient, praise God, to meet that need. And so what does she do? It tells us that they send for the vessels. The, the boys, they go, they look for the vessels. They bring the vessels in. They come into the house. The Bible says very plainly, they close the door. They close the door. Can I ask you tonight, have you ever closed the door where there's just you and God? No one else there. Just you and him. And all you want to do in that situation is prove him. Christian, have you ever done that? Christian, have you ever found yourself in that situation where somehow or other you just needed to prove the sufficiency of God because of your need, because of whatever it was that you were going through. And you see, thank God tonight in situations like that, whenever we shut to the door, whenever we get alone with him, whenever we get really get down to doing business with him, praise God, he's the one who can be found. Hallelujah! And it doesn't matter what the situation might be. He's the one who is always there. And he's the one whom we can meet with and prove him. Prove him to see us through in that situation. You know, I've said to you before, we lived for a number of years by faith. And we did all kinds of things in those days. You know, stuff that was probably foolish, to be quite honest. We look back, I look back at it now, we were young, weren't we? <laughs> We were young in those days. And whenever you're younger, you tackle stuff that perhaps you don't tackle whenever the years begin to roll in on top of you. And we made mistakes like everybody else makes mistakes. But I want to say this tonight. There have been occasions in life when we had no one but the Almighty God. And we proved him to be everything that he promised he would be. And you see, that's what she is called upon to do in this story. Elisha says to her, shut the door. Go, borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels. Borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons. A time and experience whenever you just have to do business with God. Can I say to you lovingly tonight, dear one, if you would be saved in this service this evening, Somehow you've got to shut out the distraction. Somehow you've got to shut out everything else that's bombarding your mind, bombarding your heart, and you've got to get down to doing business with Almighty God. And I want to promise you tonight on the authority of His Word, if you are prepared to do that and meet with Him on a one-to-one -one basis, even in this meeting, if you're prepared to meet with him on a heart-to-heart -heart basis with Almighty God, praise God, he will be found of you and he will be able to meet your every single need because that's who he is tonight and that's how he wants it to be. Does he not say over in the Old Testament in the book of, in the book of Malachi, he says, prove me now herewith, saith the Lord. Do you know we have a God tonight who just loves people to prove him, to prove that his word is true? To prove that he's faithful to the very end. To prove that he's everything that he has promised he will be. To prove that he's able to do everything that he has promised that he can do. That's who he is tonight. And sad to say, we live in days where we are so far removed from him. We are even afraid to seek to prove him in that way. And yet, that's exactly how he wants to be with us. The Bible says he's a friend who sticks closer than a brother. What is a friend? Have you ever really thought about that? What is a friend? You know, we sing about farewellered friends. We used to sing about that years ago. They'll leave you standing on life's shore. Farewellered friends. Fine as long as everything's going good. But what's a real friend? 
See, I'll tell you folks tonight what a real friend is. A real friend is someone that you have proved who will stick with you in whatever that situation was. And whenever that friend has been loyal and faithful and has stuck by you, maybe whenever everybody else has forsaken you, then you realize that this is a, a true friend. Let me tell you this, there are very few in life. But tonight we speak of a friend. He sticks closer than a brother. And he simply says to us, to prove him. Prove his friendship. Prove his loyalty. Prove his word. Prove his power. Prove everything that there is to prove about him. Be in that kind of, of close relationship with him. When we are proving him to be the God who is enough. Hallelujah. Because tonight, praise God, that's exactly what he is. And so she shuts the door. There's no one there but her and the boys. And now the moment arrives. What's going to happen? She takes a pot of oil. And she takes a, an empty vessel. And you know the story, we've read it. She pours the oil into the vessel. It fills. She sets it beside. She takes another empty vessel. She pours the oil in. It fills the vessel. She sets it beside. And she does this over and over and over and over and over again. doesn't tell us how many vessels she had. Did she have two or three dozen? Did they manage to gather up a hundred? We have no idea how many there were. But here's the thing. Every time there was a vessel that was empty, there was a sufficiency of oil to fill the vessel. And that went on, and that went on, and that went on, until she filled the vessel and she said to her son, is there another vessel? And he said, no, that's them all, that's them all. And the oil stopped flowing. What were those vessels worth to her? Have you ever thought about that? You see, the vessel that was empty in her hand was worth the value of the oil that she could put in there. The vessel that was full, whenever they all were full, the vessels could take no more oil. They were of no more worth. They were of no more value. And if you're a believer tonight, let me suggest to you that in your life, the situations where God can pour in oil into your life are the times in your life whenever you are empty. Whenever you are empty. And you know, those are the times in our experience whenever we're saved and, and, and those lean times come and, and, and we feel that we're empty and we feel that we, we haven't got as much to offer as we should be offering or we feel we can't play the part the way we should be playing the part in the things of God. And, and, and we all hit those things. We all hit those times. Let me say to you tonight, believer, don't be discouraged about those times. Because those are the very times, praise God, whenever the oil of the Holy Spirit is there and it is sufficient to fill you again to overflowing, to enable you to be everything that God wants you to be. And at other times, whenever we feel full, especially whenever we feel full of our own ability and we feel full of our own talent and we feel full of the things that so easily fill us up, he can't pour his blessing in. And tonight he longs for us just to be empty. That he can fill us. If we're saved, he wants to fill us. He wants to pour the oil into every single one of us. And so the Lord chooses vessels. He calls people onto himself. And in those empty vessels, he can pour in himself the Holy Spirit to fill that vessel to overflowing, to enable that vessel to be of worth in his kingdom, for the glory of his holy name. If you're sitting in this meeting tonight, and as I say, you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, can I ask you tonight, and I've asked you just a few moments ago, have you room for him in your heart? Have you room for Jesus? Because tonight, if you haven't, why don't you empty yourself of all of that? Why don't you allow yourself to be empty tonight in his presence, and allow him to pour himself right into your soul? right into your being, 
Why don't you just call upon him tonight and ask him to forgive you your sin? Empty yourself of the sin that so easily besets us all. Empty yourself of that corruption. Empty yourself of the fact that you're defiled because of sin. You're born in sin. You're shaped in iniquity. Empty that out before him in confession and allow him to touch your life and fill you to overflowing. Because praise God, he can come. And that oil will flow into every vessel that's reached forth to him that's empty with a capacity to hold something. And so she filled them until the last one came. Whenever the last one was filled, the Bible tells us that the flow of oil, it finished. It finished. You know, friends, he promises his blessing is infinite fullness. Listen to what Michael chapter 2 verse 7 says. O thou that art named the house of Jacob, is the spirit of God straightened? Are these his doings? Why do we not see more of the moving of the Holy Spirit? Is it because of God? Our friends, is it because we are too full and he can't pour anything more in because we carry too much stuff down life's journey with us in spite of the fact that we're called to be his and surrender to him. The vessels are filled. The flow of oil finishes. And she goes back. She goes back to the man of God, to Elisha. And she tells him all about this situation. And he says to her, go, verse 7, he says to her, go sell the oil, pay the debt. Having received the gift of God, she is able now to meet all the claims of the creditor. And she and her sons, they are basically saved by grace and by grace alone. You see, dear one, let me explain it to you in this way. Because we have broken his law, a price has to be paid. Our Lord Jesus Christ paid that price in full at the cross of Calvary. And tonight you stand with an opportunity. Tonight you stand with a decision, if you like. Because you either accept the payment that he made at the cross on your behalf, or you spend all of eternity paying that debt for yourself. And God in his grace tonight, just like Elisha says here, God says, what shall I do for thee? God says, I have given my son. God says, blood has been shed. The paschal lamb, the lamb that was slain in God from before the foundation of the world, the blood has been shed. And God says to you tonight, will you accept that payment? Because God says, I will. And that pays in full for the debt that you owe because of sin. But on the other hand, God says, if you don't want that payment, that's fine. That's your choice. But you will pay for all of eternity. All of eternity in that lost condition. And so where do we stand tonight? Where do you stand, dear one? Will you empty yourself tonight? And will you allow him to pour his love into you? Will you allow him to pour his forgiveness into you? Will you allow him to pour his mercy into you? Will you allow him to pour his grace into your life? Will you lay your sins down at his feet and being empty before him, allow him to pour into your life everything that you need for time and for eternity because it's available. There's oil to meet the need. It's available at the cross of Calvary. And tonight, praise God, you can accept that gift, that gift, and you can be saved by his grace because Jesus has paid in full. You could be sitting here tonight thinking, well, if I did that, what would my life be like? Maybe you're sitting here tonight thinking, if, if I did that, you know, how would I keep that? Could I keep that? 
Could I maintain that kind of life? Could I stay like that? Well, let me close with this little thought. Because you see, he says to her, go sell the oil. Pay the debt. Let the debt be paid in full. And then he says this to her, and what's left, you and your sons live of what's left. And you see, tonight, praise God, not only is there a gift of grace that can fill your life through our Lord Jesus Christ, that can, that can save you from, from the debt and from the penalty of that sin, but praise God, he comes, that oil, he comes by his Holy Spirit to live in you, to sustain your life from that time onwards. You don't walk in your own strength. You don't keep your Christianity in your own ability. The Bible tells us in John chapter 1, but as many as receive him, to them gives he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. All you've got to do tonight is accept the gift and praise God there is oil sufficient to maintain your life right down through the years of time, whatever length of time he affords you here. There's a sufficient apply, supply in the Holy Spirit to meet your every need. And the wonderful thing is this, he brings us onto himself. He saves us by the grace. And the same oil, praise God, which has saved them from their debt and from their slavery also sustains us every single day. And we begin to know him as the bread of life. We begin to know him as the water of life because there's an abundant supply to meet our every single need. Just a simple story. And those are just a few of the truths that are so readily seen as we think about these verses together. Let me ask you tonight, where do you stand? Where do you stand? Believer, what is your relationship with him like tonight? Can I ask you tonight, if you were to hit a difficult patch in your experience, do you know him well enough? Are you in close enough relationship with him that you can shut the door and prove him to be sufficient in that situation to see you through? And if you're in this service tonight and you don't know him as Lord and Savior, let me say it to you again. Will you make room for him tonight? Empty yourself. Pour that sin out in confession before him and ask him to come and fill your life to overflow him. And he not just clear your debt, but praise God there will be sufficiency to see you through from this time forth. I praise God even forevermore. Beloved, where do we stand? Just simple story. Simple truth. And I'm asking you tonight, do you know Jesus? Do you know him? Let's just bow for a moment's prayer. Praise God. Do you know him? Do you know this wonderful, wonderful Savior? You just ponder the truth of that in your heart. Do you know him tonight? Because you can. Praise God, he can wipe that debt. He can wipe that slate clean. And he can give you everything that you need to live for him from this time forth. Now, just as you're bowed before him tonight, let me say this very simply to you. She went to the prophet. The prophet told her what to do. And just as you sit before God tonight, we have sought to tell you what to do. Would she not have been a fool not to have done what the prophet told her? And I'm asking you tonight, would you not be a fool if you don't do what you've been told tonight, especially in the light of the love of the cross, the Savior who loved us, gave himself for us, wouldn't it be just glorious tonight if you could leave this place saying in your own heart, the Savior who loved me 
and gave himself for me. Don't turn away from that. But just in the silence of your own heart right now, reach out to him. Ask his forgiveness. Ask his pardon. Offer your life to him and allow him to come and fill you to overflowing with himself. And praise God, your life will never, ever, ever be the same again. Lord, just a simple message. Lord, the gospel is a simple message. Lord, your word says the wayfaring man, though a fool, shall not err therein. Lord, the gospel is so simple. We reach out to you. You meet us at the point of our need. You save us. And you come to dwell within. Lord, may there be those in this meeting tonight who will be enabled even right now to see the reality of that. Eyes open to see the truth of that. And may there be hearts opened to receive that. And to be cleansed in your precious blood. And to have sins forgiven and that debt wiped completely. Because Jesus paid the debt that I could never pay. Bless your word to every heart. Bless every single life that's bowed before you. And Lord, as we often say, Father, save such as should be saved. Asking it in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God.